Welcome in Cyclone fans, how you feeling after that one? A big win for Iowa State. We've got John Schaefer up at Jack Trice. We will get to him in a minute. We've got a whole mess at the top of the Big 12. We'll get to that in a few minutes. But hey, what do you say we relive what we just watched? Iowa State taking on Oklahoma up at Jack Trice. Let's roll them in front of fans for the first time this year. Well, general public for the first time this year. And uh, first quarter tied at three. Spencer Rattler delayed shovel to Seth McGowan. Down inside the 30, Rattler would uh, finish that drive off on his own. This isn't exactly the pinnacle of athleticism, but yeah, he's in. Up and over. Didn't look pretty, but it's a touchdown, and it's 10-3 Oklahoma early at Jack Trice. Let's keep it rolling here. Second quarter now. Rattler dealing, rolls out in the flat to Jeremiah Hall. It's 17-6 Oklahoma. We'll see a very similar play a little bit later. Iowa State, though, getting a little bit fancy. Brock Purdy to Dylan Sainer to Chase Allen. No, it's the double pass. Look at the diving grab one more time on this from behind. Also, Sainer played pitcher in high school. That, you know, that explains the tight spiral. Second half now after uh, Brees Hall punches it in, makes it 17-13. So we'll go to the second half late in the third quarter. It's 2016. Purdy to Xavier Hutchinson, gone. And it's... Iowa State's first lead. They have only beat Oklahoma seven times in their entire history, and they're up 23-20. Now 23-23, Oklahoma State gets to Purdy. They were fifth fewest forced turnovers last year, but uh, that's timely there. Then it's Rattler to Hall. I told you we'd see the same play again. Oklahoma's got the 30-23 lead. Back and forth we go. It is Brocktober, ladies and gentlemen, from three yards out, and we're tied now at 30. Yeah, he's fired up. You can see Jack Trice shaking a little bit on the camera, and then it becomes Brees Hall time. Rumbling, bumbling, stumbling, bouncing off, guys, down inside the 10-yard line, and we are midway through the fourth quarter, and then for good measure, the game-winning touchdown, Brees Hall from eight yards out. Thank you very much, Iowa State. Tops 18th ranked Oklahoma, 37-30. That loss to Louisiana feels like a long time ago. The Cyclones, 2-0. And now they are at the top of the Big 12. Now today was also the first time that fans were welcomed back into uh, Jack Trice. Fans outside of close relationships with players and coaching staff, of course. A maximum of 15,000 in attendance. And let's just say those who managed to get to the stadium for tonight's game, well, they were very excited to be there. It's amazing. I'm so excited. I'm so happy that they um, allowed us to be in the stands and go state. I feel like we've been quarantined for so long and so being able to be out here and cheer on our cyclones and be in attendance with other people is wonderful. I think it's going to be a drastic improvement. Um, it was great being there, but uh, just the, the loudness and just having everybody involved, it's going to be it's going to be really rocking today, even with the few that we have. Take the right precautions. Um, follow the rules and everybody should be safe and enjoy a great victory today. Yep. We're, I tell you what, an Iowa State fans I think will uh, comply and uh, we'll be back next week for Texas Tech. Yeah, they celebrated the victory and so let's go find Local 5 Sports Director John Schaefer. Buddy, I'm jealous of you. I know it's chilly, but uh, you got a good one up there. What's the vibe like around the stadium now? Yeah, that's right, Matthew Judy. The buzz is electric around here. Even with 15,000 fans, they are all thrilled to see what they just witnessed. Of course, a big win over Oklahoma. Now, this is the first time Oklahoma's actually lost back-to-back -back games since 1999. Yeah, it's been a while. Last year, of course, Iowa State was one point away, a two-point conversion away from winning that one. Tonight, they get full redemption, a full touchdown win. And, of course, that big interception at the end was what sealed the deal. But what a fourth quarter it was. Of course, it is Brocktober right now. Let's be honest. October needs to be renamed Brocktober. It already is up here names. But this team came together in the second half, really put together a performance that they needed to come away with the win over a very good OU team. No doubt about it. OU is a good team, maybe down a little bit from years past. But still, that fourth quarter was a lot of fun. And it started with the Kanenu Wangwu. Big kickoff return. Let's be honest, that changed the makeup of that entire game the rest of the way home because then from there you had Brock Purdy punching it in. Defense comes up big with a big stop, and then offense goes right back to work. Brees Hall, man among boys. Yeah, he's only a sophomore. That's a scary thought, isn't it? He takes it in for the game-winning touchdown, and then 
Defense locks down once again when it matters most with that interception in the end zone to seal the deal in this one. Of course, Iowa State now 2-0. They're actually tied atop the Big 12 standings with Oklahoma State and Kansas State. Now, if you picked those three to be at the top of the Big 12 standings, I might have called you crazy, but hey, it's a weird year. Big 12, quite shaken up. K-State, Iowa State don't meet till later in the season. Of course, Iowa State gets Texas Tech back here next week. Looking forward to that matchup. Always a dangerous Red Raiders team. Cannot dwell on this win. Obviously, Matt Campbell, though, will tell you everything went right tonight. Still plenty to clean up, and they will before Texas Tech next week. So, Matthew, Judy, I got to get to post game. A lot of fun out here. Fans loving life. Good time. We'll see if Iowa State can go 3-0 next week. Yeah, hey, go, go back to doing your job. Thank you very much, John. And you heard him mention Oklahoma State and Kansas State. Well, what do you say if we get to what else went on around the Big 12 today? Texas is back, right? That's what we keep hearing. Maybe not. TCU's Max Duggan. Have a day. Threw for 230 yards, but he got it done on the ground. Two rushing touchdowns against Texas today. Here's the second. The game winner, 26 yards out. Hook him horns down. TCU beats Texas 33-31. Now let's go to Oklahoma State. Shane Illingsworth, productive to say the least. Three passing touchdowns, 17 of 23 on the day. His biggest coming to Braden Johnson. 66 yards. House call. Make it 17-0. They're doing to Kansas what a lot of teams do to Kansas. Sorry, that's my Mizzou fan I'm showing there. How about we get to uh, Chuba Hubbard now doing his thing. He takes it around the left side and uh, dancing, 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 finds a hole. Yeah, this one got ugly. Oklahoma State tops Kansas 47-7. So now we've got an absolute cluster in the Big 12. You heard John mention it. Let's see if we can pull up the standings here. Oklahoma State, K-State, and Iowa State all 2-0 at the top. And then you got a gaggle of teams 1-1 behind. West Virginia, TCU with that win over Texas today. The Big 12, folks, is going to be a whole lot of fun. Iowa State looking to make it 3-0 next week against Texas Tech. And like I said, that loss to Louisiana. Feels like it was uh, a long time ago. And speaking of a uh, long time ago, this fall weather, 